In this video, I am starting a series of educational material for beginners in trading, and today we will talk about candles, how they are made, how to read a chart, and what each candle means in which case. Perhaps someone opening this video will ask, what is the point at all? It is clear that candles show where the price is going. Green ones rise, red ones fall. In fact, the meaning of this video is much deeper than it may seem at first glance, as each candle, depending on its appearance, can predict the further direction of the price. How and why this works will be explained in this video. Pay attention to the description, there will be a link to register on the Bybit exchange. This is the top exchange where I personally trade, and it is number one in trading volume liquidity and has the lowest fees. From this, you will save around several hundred dollars monthly. And why do I recommend registering specifically through my referral link in the description? You will receive a cash bonus for registration ranging from $10 to $30,000 depending on the size of your deposit. Most of my subscribers receive $100, but if you have no deposit at all, you will be credited at least $10. If you are a large trader with a good deposit, you will be credited up to $30,000. But for large amounts, you will need to achieve the corresponding trading volume. On this page, click here and you can see what bonus you will receive for registration. Link is below. Enjoy watching. Let's start with the basics. What is a candlestick? What is a candlestick chart? I can see beginners who, when opening a chart, are used to seeing it roughly like this. Someone tried to trade something from binary options, and naturally, they were deceived. Someone looks at statistical websites with such a chart. In trading, a candlestick chart or a bar chart is used. They are the same, but personally, I find the bar chart less pleasant. A candlestick chart shows, in its standard form, where the price has moved. A red candle means the price fell, and a green one means it rose. So let's figure it out. There is a thing called a time frame. Here it is selected in trading view, and at the moment I have the time frame set to one minute. This means that one candle shows the price change for one minute. So if I set the time frame to one hour, it means that one candle shows the change for one hour. It's all logical. That is, one hourly candle contains 60 minute candles. So if I now count the last 60 from this candle, it will be exactly one candle on the hourly time frame. Well, to be more precise, it's not quite so, because each candle on each time frame is tied to a specific time in one way or another. So this candle you see, when I hover over it, yes, this, the date and time will be written below. It opened at 18 moms. It is now 1839, so if I open the minute candle, this specific candle will consist of 39 minute candles. Why? Why not 60? Because it hasn't closed into 60 minute candles yet. It will have 60. When it closes and Roughly speaking, a new hour starts, a new candle begins to form, then this one will have 60. Accordingly, in the same way, if I turn on the two-minute candle, one candle consists of two one-minute candles. What does this mean? This means that when opening, for example, an hourly candle, we will see, well, something like the following. We can see different options, yes, but, for example, we will see something like this. And what does this tell us? Firstly, we don't know, until we look at the smaller time frame, what happened inside this candle. Absolutely different movements could have occurred here. It could be like this. It could be like this, it could be like that. The first thing we pay attention to is whether the candle was red or green. That is, if the candle is green, it means that the price increased during the formation of this candle. If it's red, then it fell. And note that the candle consists of two characteristic elements. This is the body of the candle, this thick part, and tail of the candle, this thin part, which is also called the wick. If the candle is green, then the moment the candle opened, the price level where it was at the moment of the candle's opening will be the lower part of the candle's body. The moment where the price closed, or if this candle is not yet closed, where the price is right now, is the upper part of the candle's body. Once so again, if the candle is green, if it is red, then the price opened at the upper part of the candle and closed at the lower part of the candle body. What do these peaks, these tails, these wicks mean? It means that the price during the formation of this candle reached this maximum level and this minimum level. That is, it opened right here, for example, the candle is red, the price opened here, went up a bit and reached this level. It dropped down to about here and here the price closed approximately. You are looking at this chart, pay attention to what I am drawing. And for example, this is how the movement inside this candle could have looked. Um, in fact, it could have looked something like this and in many other different ways. That is, we do not know what I just told you a minute ago, that we do not know until we look at a smaller frame, what exactly this movement consisted of, its formation. What does this tell us? It tells us that if we are trading on a certain time frame, for example, if we are used to analyzing the daily, for the accuracy of our analysis, we should also look at smaller time frames, at least say the four hour. I remind you that a daily candle represents 24 hours, which means six candles of four hours each. 
And we can see the formation of the chart in more detail, that is, how it all grew here, whether it interestingly retraced or just grew without any retracement. To see this, we open the 4-hour chart and see that at times the growth was without retracement, at times it stayed in place, then again grew without retracement, stayed in place with small retracements, and so on. Now, next point. We have figured out what candles are, what they consist of, and what they show. How do we read these candles? What do they tell us? Let me outline the most basic fundamental points that work in crypto. In fact, if you Google candlestick patterns right now, you will find a huge number of different examples, various articles, and so on. Different candlestick patterns, most of which mean nothing in crypto and do not work at all. I will now give a few examples that actually work. In other words, if you see such a candle, you can open a certain trade, but this is very rough. For now, if you are just starting your journey in trading, keep in mind that, of course, one candle is not enough to open a trade, but at least some hint about the direction in which you will open a trade can be present even in one candle. So, I will now draw a basic one, and then summarize a characteristic rule that you can use to analyze candles that are slightly different, but can roughly be related to these patterns. So, a candle can consist entirely of one body without any wicks. This is what a candle can look like. What does this mean? It means that it confidently rose during the formation of this candle, most likely without a pullback. Or it could have fallen, depending on the color of the candle, green or red. A candle can consist, roughly speaking, of just one wick and a tiny body somewhere here. What this candle means will indicate completely different movements. Let's move on. A candle can look something like this, with a huge wick upwards. A candle can look something like this, with a huge wick downwards. And these are also completely different characteristic patterns that predict, roughly speaking, certain movements in the future. So what do they predict? When we see such a candle, dense, thick, strong, we should look at several candles before to see what was happening prior. For example, the price was somewhere up here, and then we see such a huge candle with a massive pullback down. Most likely, this indicates that the price was stagnant here because buyers and sellers were roughly equal in number, and then a huge seller came in. There is also a possibility that there were simply no buyers left, just zero purchases, while the seller remained the same, and the same thing happened. But most likely this is rare in a crisis. Most likely a huge seller just came in, and perhaps a new trend is starting, so we need to pay attention, at least to the probability of further decline. Maybe even open a trade somewhere on the pullback and so on, to find an entry point. But such a characteristic movement after the price was in a narrow range says a lot. If the price looked something like this, from the left side of the chart, with roughly the same number of candles and about the same volume scale, this specific candle will mean nothing. The price is simply moving sideways with high volatility. Volatility is the degree of price change over a period of time. This candle is called an engulfing if the price was in a narrow range before and then sharply moved in either direction. So this will be a bullish engulfing and this will be a bearish one. Roughly speaking, this is a signal of either market effort if it's a bullish engulfing, meaning if it's a green candle and the trend is upward, or it's a strong downward signal if it's a bearish candle. Remember, yes, bulls are buyers, those who push the price up, like, roughly speaking, a bull thrusts upward with its horns, while a bear knocks down with its paw, causing the price to fall. This is trader slang. In general, this candle is a characteristic signal that works in crypto and that I regularly use in my trading. It can look a bit different, and let me show you in examples. For instance, the price was in a narrow range, after which there was a huge bullish engulfing, and look at what happened. The price continued to move upward. This, for example, will not be considered a bullish engulfing, it's just a vertical spike upward, since in this context we are looking not only at the last couple of candles, but at the whole picture. The price was essentially just rising vertically, and this is simply a continuation of the growth. If there was something more or less neutral, and then a sharp engulfing like here, this really is a signal. Let's move on. The moment with the candle where there is a small body and huge wicks in both directions indicates uncertainty. Why? Because the price opened at this level. It closed at this level, but during this time it managed to trade both up and down with both buyers and sellers being active. This is maximum uncertainty. If we see such a candle, well, at the moment when the price stands like this, it probably means nothing again. On the contrary, if we see such a candle after a trend, for example, when the price was rising like this, and then there is such uncertainty, it may signal that the trend is changing. That is, we had a strong, strong rise, perhaps even without a pullback, like in the example I showed here at the bottom, and then there is such a candle. That indicates that both sellers and buyers seem to be active after a strong movement. This often may signal a trend change. Similarly, if the price was falling, meaning there was a downward trend, such a candle may indicate that we have some hint that the price will go up. 
It doesn't necessarily mean it will go in the opposite direction, but it indicates that if there were no buyers before and the price was actively falling, a buyer has appeared here. Don't know if this buyer will be active enough to push the price up. But such a probability is not just present, it is high. Doesn't always happen, but the probability is high. Either immediately after this or after a short time, the price may stay in a range here and then shoot in the opposite direction of the previous movement. With these candles, it's all simpler. They make sense in similar situations of the following nature. If the price rose sharply and was immediately sold off, such a candle will form. The same can be said about a candle that has some body here at the bottom. And this candle must be red. That is, a green candle like this will likely not indicate much. But if the price has risen in this case, in the direction of the trend, and we see a huge tail, it will indicate a probable stop, just like with this candle. If we see this candle, and if there was a downward trend before it, and we see a huge tail in the direction of the trend, this also indicates a stop in the trend. However, if we are dealing with slightly different trends, for example, it was a downward trend here, but instead an upward one, and such a situation occurred. This may indicate a continuation of the trend because a seller came, but the buyer is stronger, meaning they bought everything that the seller threw in. And here, accordingly, the same applies. If we are dealing with a downward trend, and there was such a handle with a tail against the trend, it means that at that moment, a buyer came in, started buying something, and the seller pushed the price back down. This will also indicate a continuation of the trend. Roughly speaking, after a huge tail upwards, which follows some movement, the price will likely go down either immediately or after some small sideways movement. If we are dealing with a candle with a tail downwards, then the price will likely go up, regardless of whether it follows a downward or upward trend either immediately or after some consolidation. At least, there is a high probability that this will happen. If these candles formed again somewhere in a sideways manner like this, then they have no meaning. There must be some trend. So, let's summarize. Whenever we deal with candlestick analysis, we analyze trend that occurred before these candles. If we recall the engulfing pattern I mentioned, there should be no trend here. There should be some sideways movement, but with low volatility, not like this, but with this small one, regardless of whether it's from above or below. In the case of high tails, large tails, there should be some trend in a certain direction, either up or down. And it, depending on which way the tail goes, will either likely change or continue, depending once again on the direction of the tail. Let's go back to this candle. Once again, how is it different from these two? It indicates uncertainty. These candles are specific, that is, there was a seller here, and they were bought back, there was a buyer here, and they were sold off. Most likely, this candle will indicate a downward movement, this one an upward movement, but only if there were some trends before, not sideways movement. This thing after any trend, regardless of whether it's upward or downward, indicates uncertainty, that the price is likely to stay in a sideways movement for a while, and then possibly even reverse in the opposite direction. Let me show you these examples with large tails. I've already shown you the engulfing pattern, right? Large tails. Look, the price is rising without any pullbacks, without any pullbacks, without any pullbacks. And here somewhere we see a huge tail. Then the next candle also shows the buyer starting to buy back the entire movement. And again, a fairly large tail. Here we can no longer say that the candle resembles what I drew. However, this one is identical to the one I drew for you and pay attention to what happened next. At the very least, this growth stopped and we did a sideways movement. There is a possibility of a trend reversal here. We have a candle with large tails on both sides, indicating uncertainty. After a strong upward trend, there is a likelihood of further decline. And this decline is happening. It can be large or small, but in this case, the buyer was still stronger. Here we also have a bullish engulfing pattern. So, somehow the buyer held on here. Let's move on. A little higher, everything is rising again quite well and without a pullback, and bam we see such a candle. It also indicates that everything has been sold off. The price has risen and there was a sell-off. There is a high probability of either a trend reversal moving down or that it indicates the price is in a sideways movement. And here it is in a sideways movement, but in this case, there were no strong engulfings. However, in general, I don't know. Sometimes you can even combine two candles and look at them as one. Sometimes an engulfing pattern occurs over two candles. Well, in this case, the price continued its upward movement just like here, but pay attention once again. At the very least, a sideways movement has formed. That is, it is not the case that we see a huge wick and the price actually continued to move upward after it. This happens quite rarely. Let's move on. Let's go a little to the left and look at the candle. Options with wicks on both sides, which indicate uncertainty. This one won't tell us much because it formed at a time when the price was stagnant. There is no ascending or descending trend here. The price was kind of stagnant, and it's clear that when it is stagnant, there is uncertainty. 
However, one could consider a scenario where the price rose slightly, then uncertainty set in, somehow something similar happened, but this is quite a stretch. Let's move on. Here, by the way, look at the candle. This is called a hammer candle. When we see a strong handle and tiny candle, it indicates that there was a seller here and they were bought out. In this case, by the way, this candle misled us. See, it doesn't always work, so you shouldn't rely solely on one candle, but I showed you several examples where this thing worked well. This is also a candle with long wicks on both sides, with the lower wick being longer. It indicates that the buyer started actively buying here, suggesting either a trend reversal or at least a sideways movement should be present. After the sideways movement, a trend change occurs. And here we have a sideways movement, and the trend has changed. See, the price has returned to this level. At this level, here at the bottom, you see that there is, by the way, a characteristic long wick at the bottom, indicating that there are large wicks at the bottom. This also suggests that the trend is changing, and here we have a bullish engulfing pattern. Everything is great. Large wicks, followed by a sideways movement, a bullish engulfing pattern, the trend has changed, and it just shoots up vertically. This way, you can analyze even one, two, or three candles and draw certain conclusions. This is called price action, and I use it in my trading. If you now, I remind you again, Go googling for some candlestick patterns, it will show you, well, if not hundreds, certainly, dozens of different patterns, which probably have no meaning in crypto. However, these things that I just gave you work 100%, I use them in my trading, and you also need to incorporate volume analysis here. This is a very important thing, volumes. They will be drawn at the bottom for you, maybe in a slightly different format, as bars. If you open a regular chart, not customized in any way, you will see the volume in bars. All these candles, such a golden rule, work well in the context that I just gave you, ideally on high volumes. That is, if we have, for example, the price rising, 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 and then we see a candle with a long wick upwards, and this happened without volume, it is likely not worth paying attention to. Why? Because when there is no volume, it means that with a very small amount of money, there simply wasn't a seller here, and with a very small amount of money, the price sharply increased due to the lack of a seller. And then a seller came with very little money and pushed the price back down. This doesn't mean much because not much money is traded here. However, if we see volumes like this, that they were approximately at this level, and at the moment of forming this candle, they are huge. This almost certainly guarantees a trend change either immediately or in the near uh, future. This means that a seller with volume has arrived. This is a golden rule. More volume means a stronger signal. When I talked about time frames, it is very important to understand that the larger the time frame we analyze, the stronger the signal will be. If we go to a minute, God forbid you hit a second, it's not needed. If we go to a minute, then these candles will work very poorly here. If we go to a five minute time frame, they will work a little better. If we go to an hourly time frame, for example, it will be even better. On a daily time frame, it will be even better. That is, the larger the frame, the larger the volume, the stronger the signal. This is a basic rule. And based on this, one can somehow not exactly predict trends. Predictions in technical analysis don't work poorly, but it's not what you should be focusing on. We do not make predictions, we look deeper into the market. This is called looking deeper into the market. Why a candle with a long wick was formed, because we had sellers who pushed the prices there and suddenly a buyer came in. We see that the volume is not super large. However, you see this line is the average volume. Yes, there was a spike in volume that was twice the average. Yes, and this really led to growth. Then the price retraces again. We see a tail from below, huge volume, and the price continues its upward movement. That's how it is. If you are interested in crypto trading, if you want to earn from trading, subscribe to this channel. There is a lot of content on this topic, including current market analysis. And also in the links in the description will be my Telegram channel. There is a pinned message, so subscribe to the Telegram channel and check the pinned post. There is a free mini course on trading that you can take, where we talk about these things, and more details on a number of other things that can help you in trading. Good luck.